I'm going to try to compare the Peterbilt. This is a 2004 387 with the future Tesla Semi. Now, I want you to look at this. This is my mileage. 1,676,270 miles. A lot of miles. This is um, about 1 million miles. I had a problem with the engine, and I had to replace it with a remanufactured engine. And then that, in addition to that, I've had it rebuilt. The remanufactured engine, just so you know, costs about $34,000, and an overhaul, in-frame overhaul, platinum, is about 19000 Kind of want to go over the gauges and what you can compare. This, water temperature, normal. This is your voltage, which you would need in a Tesla, because you want to know what your 12 volts are doing. Tachometer, you would not need. Speed recorder, speedometer, yes. Some reference for a fuel gauge. Oil pressure, possibly. I'm sure that the drive units on the Tesla would need oil pressure of some sort. Uh, airflow uh, to the... Uh, to the engine no you wouldn't need that you would need this this is shows pressure on the brakes and they use air and the Tesla would have to do the same thing because hydraulic fluid would heat up way too fast in such a heavy load that you carry in a semi truck up to 80,000 pounds and so air does not heat up as fast and it can be compressed more and more and more to add the braking as your brakes start begin to fade. And one of the advantages, of, of course, would be the Tesla over this. Well, I'll show you in just a second. And this is your pressure of each of your two tanks. You have a primary tank and a secondary tank. They serve two purposes. One is for your air suspension, your air brakes, of course, and um, emergency supplies and your trailer brakes. Uh, because you have to hook your trailer brakes up and they take air also. This is a boost gauge, which you would not need on a Tesla. This uh, shows how much boost your turbo is putting out. When it puts out 42 pounds, it's putting out 428 horsepower to this uh, C13 12.7 liter diesel engine. Maximum power. This important gauge, and probably on a Tesla too, measures your temperature of your transmission, which is very important. You don't want to get it too hot. We use synthetic oil on the transmission and the differentials. And this takes 50 weight. This takes 85, 95 synthetic oil, both of these, front and rear. This is the temperature gauge of your turbos, which, remember, they spend hundreds of thousands of RPMs, so they can get hot. The more boost you have when you get up here, the more the temperature goes up and you don't want to overextend it, which I never have. And this is the temperature of your engine, which you wouldn't need in a Tesla. And the cruise control, which you'd want in a Tesla, it'd be nice that they had adaptive cruise control. Jake brakes, which you don't need. Three positions, six cylinder, four cylinder, two cylinder. This is something that you wouldn't need in a Tesla. This locks the axles together, so at least you have one spinning wheel on the front axle and one on the back. It's not four-wheel drive because it have, doesn't have uh, lock differentials on it, uh, each differential. Uh, but it will spin one wheel on one differential and one on the other when this is engaged. And this lowers your rear suspension, air suspension, which is very important when you go underneath a trailer or when you separate from a trailer. It's nice when you pull the pin on the fifth wheel that you can drop down the rear end down and so you can smoothly pull underneath these heavy trailers. Normal lights, fog lights, these are lights for backing in. And there's lights in the back of the cab that makes it easier because we do a lot of stuff at night. This is your air air fan. It's a, it's a clutch that activates your your fan on your engine just spins freely unless it's needs to be cooled and then it gauges by air another important reason for air and uh, I mean this one excuse me this one right here and just heated mirrors and that basically is a Peterbilt and again this is a 2004 so it doesn't compare to a Tesla semi because that will have it should have these things because when you drive down the down the road if you've had any pilot training you're trained to look in your mirrors 
well, you don't look in your mirrors on an airplane, but you look at your gauges because you want to know what the, that is. Uh, you want to know what your temperature your engine is. You want to know what your, if your oil pressure is low. You want to know what your speed is, of course, and fuel. And, you know, you want to, I look at this a lot right here with the boost pressure because the higher the boost, the lower the fuel economy is. I average about 6.4 miles per gallon in this truck. And that is okay for a 2004. They, the newer ones get better. But this doesn't have all the pollution stuff that, and all the headaches you have with the, uh, um, a newer engine like the particulate filter or the diesel exhaust fluid that you have to put in uh, these semis after 2010. Anyway, uh, the reason I'm out driving for four months is to pay for my Chevy Bolt with a B. And uh, there's a lot of reasons I like that car over, let's say, a Model 3, which I had a reservation for that, but I canceled it and got a really good deal on my Chevy Bolt, which I really like the car. And hopefully one day they're going to offer an 80 kilowatt pack. I'll buy it, put it on there, and take the 60 kilowatt pack and put it in my solar building. But anyway, that's a, a comparison between the gauges anyway. Keep in mind that from what I heard about the Tesla Semi, they're going to put four motors on there, and they're going to be the same motors that are on a Model 3. Model 3 weighs 4,000 pounds, and so they're going to have to have a beefy way to transfer that because if you put 4,000 pounds times four, that's 16,000 pounds. Well, each one of those wheels is going to have to turn up to 20,000. Each one of those motors, 20,000 pounds. That's five times the weight of a Model 3. And if they have to be heavy duty. The transmission in this vehicle, this Peterbilt, is incredibly well built and heavy duty, as well as the differentials. These things take a beating. If you don't believe me, watch Ice Road Truckers and see what kind of beating a truck takes and keeps on going amazingly. I don't beat my truck that way because I need it to last. But these do take a huge beating every day you drive with potholes, corners, shifting. Anyway, I hope the uh, Tesla Semi, and I wish I was going to be in the business long enough to get one, which I'm not. Um, I hope it's as good as I hope that Elon Musk will make it make it heavy duty that will last 1.6 million miles 2 million miles these trucks really can last maybe 4 million miles if you take care of them 2 million easy 3 million if you do a couple overhauls they're built that well good luck in your decision on that Tesla Semi which I hope is going to be as good as it looks.